So, we are seeing the life of Adi Shankaracharya Ji. Last session, we went through the first half of his life. So now the adults will get a chance to listen to the second half of his life. How brilliant and amazing he was and how well he utilized every moment of his life. We were at Varanasi in Kashi. Remember where he met the Chandala and the Chandala in the Chandala, he had the vision of Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva said, now you go to Badri. So now, Acharya Shankara makes his way to Badri. And I told you, I'd tell you what an Acharya is. Because in Kashi, he was teaching everybody, sharing this knowledge. And it is there where he got his first disciple known as Padmapadacharya. So what is an Acharya? What is the responsibility that he took up? Acharya means this. Achinoti hi shastrarthan achare sthapayatyapi swayam acharate yacha tam acharyam prachakshate. Achinoti hi shastrarthan means the one who collects the essence of all the Shastra, who knows what the Shastra is about. Many people will only see the Shastra for one portion of the Shastra. But Adi Shankaracharya Ji knew all kinds of Shastras. He knew all schools of philosophy. He knew exactly how to speak to each kind of person. Achare sthapayatyapi. Not only that, but he inspired people to put it into action. Whatever it is that he was sharing about Vedanta, he inspired people to follow it. But how did he inspire people to follow it? Swayam acharate yaccha. Because he himself followed, isn't it? Many times we wonder, how come nobody's taking our advice? How come no one's listening to us? Well, because we're not following our own advice. Then we'll say, oh, my kid's not listening to me. This is not happening. But we're not following what we stand for. So how do we expect anybody to follow us? He was a true Acharya in that he led and inspired people to follow. Not that he said, you better do this, you better do that. Because he led and everybody saw that he was walking the talk, everybody wanted to follow Tam acharyam prachakshate. That is called an acharya. So in Kashi, he was this kind of teacher, teaching all kinds of students. You know, there's the kinds of students who pick up things right away. You tell them once, they got it. And there are some students, you have to, sh you have to guide them and you have to show them. You know, you have to say, step one, do this. Step two, do this. Step by step, you have to do it. And not only one time, maybe five or six times. A different kind of student. Another kind of student doesn't even know what they're supposed to do. They're not even asking you how to do it. They're like, uh, what do I do? That kind of student he also had. So he also had to take those kinds of student. See, he was one Acharya, but different, different kinds of student. He had something for each and every one of them. And he engaged in brilliant debates. And now he is in Badri. Now what did he do in Badri? In Badri, he was writing commentaries on the Prasthanatraya. We saw the Bhagavad Gita, the Upanishads, and the Brahma Sutra. So he was writing commentaries on the Brahma Sutra. And so a few years passed by, and he was going to be 16. Now everybody knows Adi Shankaracharya Ji was supposed to pass away when he was 16, right? That was the deal. So it was near his age to pass. And he, so he wanted to finish all the work. And he finished the Brahma Sutra Bhashya. And what a terrific commentary he wrote. First of all, we talked a little bit about the Brahma Sutra. It's 555 sutras. And what's in the Brahma Sutra? The Brahma Sutra... If there are any conflicts in Shruti, 
in which in the Upanishads, if there are any seeming conflicts, the Brahma Sutra reconciles those differences. And the Brahma Sutra also, it champions Advaita over other schools of philosophy. And you know, when Veda Vyasji wrote these sutras, sutras are just one line. It'll, it'll just be like, Athato Brahma Jignasa. Uh, therefore, thereafter, desire to know Brahman. That's the first sutra. Now, what do you do with that? Shastra Yonitvat, the womb of Shastra. Oh, wh huh? you know, because it, then you see all these sutras, they're like that. Very, very short. And therefore, Veda Vyasji is called Sutrakara. Like Adi Shankara Chayaji is called Bhashyakara. He's called Sutrakara because he wrote these sutras. So now, how will people understand what these sutras are? So Adi Shankara Chayaji, he wrote an introduction to Brahma Sutra. Because if you're telling somebody, therefore, the desire to know Brahman, first of all, what is Brahman? And why should I even know Brahman? What's the point of all of this? So to Bhagavan Ved Vyastri's uh, Brahma Sutra, he wrote something called Adhyasa Bhashya. Adhyasa Bhashya is one of the most phenomenal Bhashyas ever to study. One day, hopefully, you will get to study it. But in this Bhashya, he establishes that we have to know Brahman because there is this issue of ignorance. We don't know who we are. Therefore, we are suffering in samsara. We don't know who we are, so we superimpose things upon ourselves. We think we're the body. So when the body is fat or thin or tired, we think that that's us. When the mind is happy or sad, we think that it, that's us. Somebody sent me a very nice uh, WhatsApp the other day, and it said that treat emotions like your guests. You know how sometimes when you go to people's house, they're so courteous to you, right? They, they, they open the door, they greet you with such a lovely smile, and they say, hey, come in, come in, have a seat, let me give you some food, you know, whatever, pakora, samosa, whatever. And they make you feel nice and at home, and you want to stay in those houses. You feel very welcome. But there's some houses, they open the door and they're like, oh, you're here? Okay. And then, yeah, they, they don't even tell you to sit or nothing. They won't even give you water. They're like, uh, you're waiting for her, right? Okay, wait. She'll come. Oh, you don't know. What time is she coming? Nobody tells you anything. Nobody tells you anything. You're just sitting there. So then you also feel, I don't, I don't think I want to go back to that house, right? We're like, why should I go back there? Our emotions are like that. When we get the emotion of anger and we feed it with pakora, samosa and all, anger will stay. It won't go because we're feeding it. We're feeding it so much energy and we're making it stronger. We're making it stronger. We're making it deeper. But if we stop feeding it, if we say, hey, anger, you've come. I'm not feeding you anything. Go. Chup, jow. Then uh, anger won't stay, isn't it? It'll go, right? So like that, when these emotions go, why are we feeding them? Why are we we're even giving them dessert? Forget that, we're giving them a whole, like, you know, whole course. And all the kinds of food that they want, we're giving them. But that's not who we are. When they come, let them come, let them go. But I am not that. I am not the body, not the mind, not any of these things. And be, when I identify with what is limited, that is a cause of sorrow. Any time that I am sorrowful, it is because I have forgotten the knowledge of who I am and I have identified with who I am not. And he writes this Adhyasa Bhashya. It's phenomenal Bhashya. And therefore, it adds so much beauty to Veda Vyasji's sutras. Like this he writes. So one day, one old man came to visit him. Very, very old man. And he said, Hey boy! And this Padma Pada was beside Shankara Chayaji. And he's like, you know, inside he's burning. Like, how can you call my Acharya boy? You know, I know he's like 16, but he's like Shankara Chayaji, you know? Like he was thinking like that. And this old man said, hey, hey, boy, what are you writing? So then Shankara Chayaji said, it's um, Brahma Sutra Bhashya. So this old man said, let me see. 
he looks, he looks at Adhyasa Bhasha. Well, you've never seen it before, you know? He's like, wow. And he looks at all the sutras, first sutra, second sutra, third sutra, all the different adhikaranas. And he's, ah, very good, very good. And he debates with Shankaracharya ji on and on and on. And after a few days, Padma Pada looks at this old man and says, this is no ordinary old man. And he looks into the eyes of the old man and says, are you Bhagavan Vedavyasji? And he says, yes, I am. And oh, Shankaracharya ji was like, oh my God, you know, Sashtang Namaskar, like, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm here debating with you, I'm supposed to learn from you. And Ved Vyashji looks at him and says, you have written better than I've written. If I had to write a commentary on my own Brahma Sutras, it wouldn't even be this good. What you've done is brilliant, Shankara. And because of that, you should not die now. You should continue to live on. I want you to share your deep knowledge with everybody in Bharat. And Ev, so that everybody can benefit from the depth of what you know. I bless you. Go and make Advaita Vedanta firm. Go and make it known. And so Veda Vyasji said, I will give you another 16 years to live. And so Adi Shankaracharya ji, he took the blessings of Veda Vyasji and he took his pashyas and he went off. Now, where does he go? Vedavyasji has given him a high and mighty task. He has to propagate Advaita Vedanta. He has to make this knowledge known to everybody. Where will he go? Who will he meet? So in those days, they used to encourage a lot of debate, intellectual debate. But not because they want to prove somebody wrong. Their debates weren't like, a, you know, like... Not like how our debates are here. But they wanted to prove what's true. Not prove what I, that I'm right, but prove what's true. And so they engaged in these debates. And it's not that they were trying to convert people. They just wanted to sincerely know what's true. Because in those days, the Veda had been misunderstood greatly. So many different schools were coming into being and people were missing the message. Like how Puja Gurudev doesn't aim to convert any, any Muslim or Christian or anybody. He says, I'm converting Hindus to Hinduism. That's all. I'm making you see what the real essence of Shastra is. Like that, Adi Shankaracharya ji said, now if I must establish Advaita Vedanta, I will have to go to Kumar Illa Bhatta. This person by the name Kumar Illa Bhatta, see I told you the Veda, broadly divided is in two halves, right? First is Karmakanda, next is Jnanakanda. Now Karmakanda focuses on rituals. Just they say rituals are the way to liberation. This is what we have to do. And Jnanakanda is the Upanishads. So Shankaracharya ji is king of Jnanakanda. This Kumar Ilabhata, he was king of Karmakanda. And he had defeated so many other schools. So that means if, he, if Shankaracharya ji defeats Kumar Elabhatta, he would gain dominance over Advaita Vedanta. She said, I must beat him. So where does he go? He goes to Prayag to look for Kumar Elabhatta. And he takes Padma Padacharya along with him. He goes there. And guess what he sees? He sees Kumar Elabhatta. But what happened to Kumar Elabhatta? He is in like a Pyre. He's buried in like a conical pyre. And he wants to burn himself to death. He's actually wanting to set fire and, you know, like self-immolate, burn himself. And uh, Shankaracharya ji ran to him and said, Acharya, Acharya, I need to talk to you. We, we got to talk. We have some business here. You know, you have to see what I wrote in my Brahma Sutra Bhashya and I want to discuss with you. What are you doing? He said, I have to go. I have to leave this world. Shankara Jaya Ji said, how can you leave this world? You're a great benefit to this world. So many people have learned so much from you because he respected other scholars so much. He said, no, I've committed Guru Droha. I have to go. 
So now, what, what, what did he do? What is his story? So, it is said that this Kumarila Bhatta, see, he was a hero of Karma Kanda. But now, this uh, Buddhist thinking came across, you know. And as we said, not that Shankara was against Buddha, it was against Buddhism. Because they misinterpreted what was said. As Swamiji said yesterday, they asked him, what is that state of nirvana? He kept quiet. So the disciple said, must be Shunya. Right? So then this, the Buddhists started coming and you know, they, they were a big, great challenger to the Karmakanda. You see, what happened with the Karmakanda is people started misinterpreting in the way that they started a lot of human sacrifice, animal sacrifice, all these things were going on. But the Karmakanda was deeper than that. So because this human sacrifice was going on, animal sacrifice was going on, when that Buddhism came on and that said, just do good, just be good, everybody said, let's follow this because it's non-violence. We don't need to do all these sacrifices. But then Kumar Bhatta was like, there's more to the Veda. It's not about animal sacrifice. And Adi Shankaracharya's uh, position, of course, is there's more to rituals. There's jnana, right? So everybody had their agenda. So what Kumar Bhatta wanted to do was, he said, I need to defeat Buddhism. But I cannot do it with my own logic. I will have to learn their logic. So he goes in disguise to a monastery to Buddhist monastery. And he goes in disguise and he says, I want to learn under them. What is their logic? How do they do things? Because I want to defeat them in their way, in their thinking. So he goes and stays in the monastery and he learns everything. And he passes off, you know, as a regular person, you know, doing everything that the teacher would say, everything he would do. One day, that teacher who was teaching was really criticizing the Veda, really speaking very, very hurtful things, unspeakable words about the Veda. And this Kumar Bhatta, I mean, his heart was in the Veda. He just couldn't take it. He couldn't take it. Tears started flowing from his eyes. The teacher said, what happened? He said, Acharya, I'm sorry, but I cannot take this criticism. It is incorrect. It is wrong. You can't do this. And he said, who are you? You know, he said, and then he admitted, he said, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I cannot take this. This is incorrect and I need to show my position. But they wouldn't take it. What they did was they took him to a tower and they were going to let him go. They were going to drop him from the tower. This was the crime that he had committed. Huh? They were going to drop him from the tower. So they took this Kumar Bhatta up and they pushed him from that tower. And as he was falling, he prayed. He said, Oh, Mother Shruti, if what I believe is true, I know you will save me and you will give me a chance to prove your worth. And Kumar Elabhata fell on the ground like cotton. He fell and he was still completely fine. So what he did was, he called the debate. He said, I will debate on Buddhism. And he called the top person and they had a debate and the king of the land there was Buddhist. He said, you moderate the debate. And let's go. He was ready. He said, I know all their logic. And the debate began. It was fiery. It was heated. And all of the, so many days, all the debates, all the questions. And Kumar Ilabhata, he won it. The Buddhist king declared him the winner. And he established the glory of Mother Shruti again. And everybody was so happy, so happy. But then in his heart, he felt a little miserable because he said, I committed something wrong to my guru. Means I went undercover, you know. I pretended to be somebody else, to a guru, and I cannot live with myself. You see, he couldn't live with himself. He said, I will have to die. I will let to have, have to let myself go. So therefore, he set up a conical pyre, and he was 
wanting to start the fire so that he would self-immolate. He would go. He would die in the fire. And so, so, so Shankaracharya Ji said, but uh, who will I speak to about this? I want to establish Jnana Kanda. I want to speak to somebody who's so you know, firm in Karma Kanda. And this Kumara Labata was a great person. Like there's Brahma Sutras, there's something called Jaimini Sutras of the Karma Kanda. Of that, this na- person by the name of Shabara Swami wrote a commentary. Of that commentary, Kumarala Bhatta wrote a commentary. So Shankaracharya Ji wanted to, you know, to speak to somebody. He said, you go to my disciple Mandana Mishra. You go to my disciple Mandana Mishra and he's better than me. You debate with him and I, you have all my blessings. And but you know, Shankaracharya Ji said, Acharya, what can I give you? You know, he said, Let me read your Bhashya. Let me read what you wrote. So Kumar Labata, before he passed, was reading Shankaracharya Ji's Bhashya. And he peacefully passed. So now Shankaracharya Ji was on a mission. Next he has to go to Mahishmati to find out where this Mandana Mishra lives. Where does he live? So he was going there, going there and asking people, where is the house of Mandana Mishra? Where is his house? Where could it be? They said, you know, you go on top of the hill, the biggest house there is Mandana Mishra's house. The biggest house there. And you will find outside his house, there are parrots. There are parrots that are talking about the Veda. (laughs) <laughs> because they are mimicking what he says, you know. They were parrots that are talking about the Veda, you know. Veda is Pramanika or not Pramanika, all these kinds of things are going on. When you hear these parrots, know that this is the house of Mandana Mishra. And so Shankaracharya Ji goes there. He goes there to the house. Meanwhile, this Mandana Mishra, he was performing a Shraddha ceremony. So he was busy. And slowly Shankara Chayarji walks in. You know, this Mandana Mishra didn't like the sannyasi. You know, he saw the sannyasi get, gets turned off. You know, some people they get they get turned off. You know, they see some someone they yeah, he gets turned off. He didn't like them. But then, you know, his wife, her name was Ubhaya Bharati, a great person, said, Sannyasi's home, we must give Piksha. We must welcome him the proper way, the traditional way. We must wash his feet. We must invite him in. We must give him food. He's a sannyasi after all. So Sureshwaracharya was like, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, sorry, Mandana Mishra was like, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> Later he becomes Sureshwaracharya, so that's why I said that. But Mandana Mishra is like, okay, okay, okay. So anyway, Shankaracharya Ji comes in. And Shankaracharya Ji comes in and they say, we'll give you bhiksha. He says, I want Vada Bhiksha. Means I want the Bhiksha of speech, of debate, of discussion. I want that kind of Bhiksha. I don't want food kind of Bhiksha. I want this kind of Bhiksha. And so this Mandana Mishra said, What do you know? What have you studied? You're a young boy, you know. This Sureshwar Chai was old. He was married, you know, so he's older. Must have been in his 50s or 60s. So Shankara Chai said, Whatever little, little I've studied, these few things. But I, I would love the honor of, you know, debating with you. So, so, so Mandana Mishra said, <laughs> Mandana Mishra said, okay, come, let's do it. But now who will judge their debate? Who will judge it? Because this, uh, you have Shankara Chaya Ji, renowned scholar. You have Mandana Mishra Ji, renowned scholar. Who's going to judge it? So who they chose to judge? Mandana Mishra's wife. Ubhaya Bharati, because she was an even better scholar than her husband. Means her husband would teach people every now and then, and she would be, she would study, and sometimes she would be in the kitchen. And wherever, her, whenever her husband had an error, she would be like, um, "You forgot about this," you know, you know. So like she would correct him. So she was a great scholar, and she said, "Look." I'm going to put one garland on Shankaracharya Ji's neck, another garland on Mandana Mishra's neck. Now, whichever garland fades first, that will be the loser of the debate. 
whoever's garland stays, that will be the winner of the debate. So they sat, both of them together. All, all kinds of concepts, you know, very, very deep concepts. And, uh, Suresh Varchai said, hey, the Veda doesn't have anything to do with Jnana Kanda. What is this statement, Tattva Masi? There's nothing, there's no action in it. You know, that you are. So what? What is that, you know? The, everything that is true is only with an action verb. Because if you say, I table paper, no, there's no sense. There has to be an action verb. So if a statement doesn't have an action verb, it's useless. It doesn't make sense. Oh, then Adi Shankaracharya had to argue that point, you know. Then he says, Tattva Masi, what is that? You are that. Maybe that's Arthavada only, that's praise. You are, you are something high. But literally, how can you be that? Oh, again, Adi Shankaracharya had to refute that point. Then he said, maybe Tattva Masi, maybe not that identical. Maybe you're similar to God. Well, how can you be identical to the, the truth? It can't be. Again, he had to argue that point. So days went on and these arguments were really, really deep. What happened? Suresh Acharya's garland was rotting. Uh, sorry, Mandana. Again, again. <laughs> Mandana Mishra's garland was rotting. Rotting, rotting, rotting. So his garland was rotting, rotting, rotting. And scientifically also, it's not the, the, this whatever story, it's because there was a lot of heat in him, you know. Shankaracharya was calm. There was a lot of heat in him, so obviously these things will, will rot. So anyway, he accepted defeat, finally. He accepted defeat and he said, Oh, Guru, you are really, really great and I salute you and I will follow whatever you say. And so... He said, okay, you, will, you can become my disciple and I will name you Sureshwar Acharya. Then Ubhaya Bharati said, <clears throat> you defeated my husband, but you didn't defeat me. We are together. If you defeat him, you must defeat me. So Shankaracharya ji said, okay, let's sit. So they again, they had a debate Ubhaya Bharati and Shankaracharya ji. Again, they went on, they had a debate. What happened was, Ubhaya Bharati said, I want you to talk to me about Kama Shastra, the Shastra of desire, Shastra of being with another person. Now, Shankaracharya ji is Brahmachari. He doesn't know all of this. And to win the debate, he has to know all of these things. Now, I'm bringing this up because this will be in the book, so I should also tell you. So, Shankaracharya ji said, give me some time and I will answer you on this Kama Shastra. And his disciples were like, what? <laughs> you know, what's going to happen? So, he said, just give me time. So, what Shankaracharya ji did was, in those days, they, they knew all kinds of things. He entered into somebody else's body. There was this king by the name of Amaruka. This king by the name of Amaruka, he lived in a beautiful palace, had many, many queens, but he passed away. So Shankaracharya ji said, I'm going to enter his body. I will stay there for some time. I will learn this Kama Shastra and I will come back and I will defeat Ubhaya Bharati. And so his disciples were like, Oh, Guru, don't go. We don't want to lose you because, you know, now we finally found someone that we can trust, we can hold on to. Now you're going there. What's going to happen? He said, don't worry. I'm going there to just do this work and I will come back. So he goes to, he puts himself in the body of this King Amurka. Meanwhile, Shankaracharya ji's body was preserved by his disciples in a cave. It was preserved there. He enters into the body of this king and everybody was pleased that the king came back to life, you know, because they thought he had gone lost and he'd passed away in the forest. The king came back to life, but they noticed he was a little bit different, you know, because of course, king is king, brahmachari, brahmachari, he's a little bit different. They said something's weird about this king. And obviously he had to learn everyone's names. You know, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, you can't just pretend to know everyone's name. So he couldn't call people by their names also. So he was just very, very careful. And he stayed there for some days. 
and every day he would write about this Kama Shastra, what it's about, etc. He said, I will write on it. And days passed, days passed, and his disciples were getting very ang angry. You know, when is our Guru coming back? When is our Guru coming back? It's so many days, he's not back yet. So they said, why don't we go to King Amaruka? Why don't we go to him? And they said, but how will we go? We cannot go as sannyasi. So then they said, ah, let's disguise ourselves as musicians. So these disciples disguised themselves as lovely, lovely musicians in different, different costumes. And they went there in front of the king. They said, oh, king. And you know, they made this whole drama about samsara. They made this drama how the students found a big boat and that big boat left and now they're in a small boat and they're waiting for that big boat to come. You know, all of these indirect, indirect messages they were trying to tell Shankaracharya ji. And so he was smart, you know, he said, I know these are my shishyas and I know they want me back. I better go, you know, I better go. So meanwhile, so after what happened was he gave them, because when people come, to entertain the king, they have to give gold and jewels and wealth and all. So he gave them everything and he put that Kama Shastra paper there. He put it there and he gave it to them. Then what happened was, he said, okay, I better go. So he um, was going back, you know, to his body. But meanwhile, there was an order from the minister to burn all the bodies because they were kind of suspicious about who is this in, who's this in King Amuruko's body? Who's this? Hey, burn all the bodies around. So meanwhile, the, the disciples said, we better go to our guru's body, protect it, protect it, protect it, you know. And it is said that Shankaracharya just made it in time before his body was going to be burnt. You know, and it is here when he writes a beautiful stotram, Lakshmi Narasimha Karavalambana stotram, about somebody saving him from burning. He writes the stotram. So he goes back into his body. Now he's back with Ubhaya Bharati. And he says, I've learned what you've asked me. Here is what I've written. Please go through it. And she read everything she said. Baba, re Baba, how does he know all these things? And so she said, you have defeated me. I humbly accept defeat. You can go. And her husband, now Sureshwaracharya, looks at her and says, I'm so sorry, you know, that I, I have to leave you because I joined this. I accept defeat. She said, I know, I was the judge. <laughs> you know, I knew what I was doing. I knew. But I was with you because I know you are great. And I respect wisdom and I respect knowledge. And it's time for you to go. You go. I'll be okay without you. Because I'm a scholar too, after all. I will engage myself in deep study and contemplation. Now is your time. You go with Adi Shankara Acharya Ji. And this marks Sureshwara Acharya Ji, who was the second major disciple of Adi Shankara Acharya Ji. So, in this way, he was able to really establish Jnanakanda because he went against Mandana Mishra. So, he continues on his journey. Now, where does he go? What does he do? Now, he's going to want to take a breather, <laughs> right? So, he goes to this place called Sri Salem. And you think everything will be okay now. I mean, he just went through so many crazy things, right? I mean, what else could possibly be crazier than what he experienced? goes to this place called Sri Salem. And in there, they were, there was this very uh, violent sect called Kapalikas. I told you some of them really believed in this human sacrifice, animal sacrifice. So he wanted to go there and tell them, you don't have to do all this to worship God. This is a very tamasic way of worshiping God. There's a way, to, a sattvic way to worship. Why don't you, you know, he wanted, he wanted to teach them how to do that and not harm other people. So, meanwhile, one of them got really pissed off. Or oh, who this is this Acharya think? He just comes here and then he talks to everybody about this. I mean, this is what we've been practicing for a long time. 
So and and then he, in the afternoon, during nap time, all uh, Acharya, Shankar Acharya and the Shishyas were taking a nap. This one Kapalika comes. He says, Acharya, Acharya, wake up. Acharya says, what happened? Are you okay? He says, yes, but I want your head. He says, oh, oh okay. Kapalika says, you said you're beyond the body. You said you're not the body. The truth's not the body. If the truth's not the body, give me your body. Give me your head. So Shankara Chayaji looks at him and says, wait, don't take it now because my students will hear you. It's the afternoon. You come at 12 midnight. You come, they'll be really fast asleep. Afternoon naps is not, we never really sleep in the afternoon. We pretend to sleep. But night sleep, we really sleep, you know. He said, you come. 12 o'clock midnight, you come and you take me. So Kapalika said, okay. What happens? 12 o'clock midnight. Everyone's sleeping, sleeping, sleeping deeply. Adi Shankaracharya ji is there, sleeping. And awake, half awake, half sleeping, waiting. Kapalika comes, 12 midnight sharp. And he takes Shankaracharya ji deep into the forest. And he prepares everything. He says, I am going to offer your head a sacrifice. Meanwhile, the shishyas are sleeping. The Kapalika is about to gay, take a sword, a stick, and just slash his head. And the shishyas are sleeping, but Padma Padacharya ji has a rude awakening. He, say, he wakes up and he looks at his Acharya's bed and he says, Where's my Acharya? Where's my Acharya? You know, he has that feeling, Where's my Acharya? And he runs, it is said like he runs like a lion, like a man lion, like Narasimha Avatar itself. Because this was his Upasaka. This was the one who used to worship. And he ran like crazy in the forest. And before that, Kapalika could slay Shankaracharya ji, Padma Pada took a knife and oh, he killed that Kapalika and he was completely dead. Shankara Chayaji looked at this person thinking, who is this, <laughs> you know? Because my Padma Pada is Sanandana, Sanandana. <laughs> who is this? And he saw fury. Padma Pada was in fury. And Shankara Chayaji said, calm down, calm down. He said, Guru, you better never do this to us again. I understand you're not the body. You don't need the body, but I need your body. We all need your body. What were you thinking? You know? He says, okay, okay, Padma Pada, okay, relax, relax. So then they go back, and now, once again, he's at peace now. Now nobody's running after him, nobody's, nobody's chasing him. Now, where does he go now? What does he do now? Now, he goes to the next place. He goes to this place called Sri Bali. Each and every one of his places, so many stories are there. It goes to this place called Sri Bali. Now, in this place, Sri Bali, there was this one couple, one couple, and they were so upset at their son. As if their son was like dumb. He didn't talk. He didn't say anything. You know, he was like must have been seven, eight years old. He just wouldn't talk. Sometimes they would feed him, he would eat, sometimes he wouldn't eat. You know, he was always sitting like this, sitting like this. They heard that Shankaracharya ji is coming to town. What did they do? They brought him to Shankaracharya ji. Why? Because whenever the parents can't fix anything with the children, Swamiji, you please talk to them. Swamiji, you talk to them, right? They'll bring them to the Swamiji or you fix everything. Because they, they cannot fix the children sometimes. So, like this, they also couldn't fix. They didn't know what to do with this child. He didn't talk. He said, Acharya, this is our son. He just hasn't spoken. We don't know what to do with him. Shankara, Shankara Chaya Ji looks at him. And the child looks at Shankara Chaya Ji. Shankara Chaya Ji says, Tell me, who are you? He says, Naham Manushyo Nacha Deva Yakshao 
Nabrahmarakshatriyaveshashudraha Nabrahmachari Nagrihivanastha Pikshur Nachaham Nijabodharupaha He says, I'm not a man. Naham Manushyaha Nachadevayakshaha means I am not any divine being. Na Brahmana, I am not a Brahmana. Kshatriya, I am not a warrior. <clears throat> Na Vaishya, I am not a trader. Shudraha, I am not a laborer. And he says, Na Brahmachari, I am not a student. Na Grihi, I am not a householder. Vanastha, I am not anybody who is retired. Pikshuhu, and I am not even a sannyasi. But who am I? Nijabodha Rupaha. I am that pure, pure consciousness. That is my real nature. Adi Shankaracharya Ji looked at him and said, Varehoa, your child is not an ordinary child. Your child is a saint. He knows the knowledge of the truth as clear as a fruit in his hand. Therefore, I will call him Hasta Malaka. Because just like you can see an Amalaka fruit in your hand, just as clearly as you can see it, he can see the knowledge of the truth. You give him to me and let me take care of him. They said, but how can we give how can we give our only son? Shankaracharya said, Don't you know, few years ago, when your son was only two, you and your husband went by the river bank and you wanted to take a bath. So you saw a Mahatma and you left your child with that Mahatma to ask him to take care. And you and your husband went to bathe in the river. And when you came back, you were shocked because that baby that you left with the Mahatma had gone to the river. The Mahatma was stuck in Samadhi that he didn't even know that the baby had gone into the river and that baby had died. And so when you went back to the Mahatma, you cried and poured your heart, your heart out because you lost your only child. And the Mahatma said, I will bring your child back. But how did he do it? He himself became the child. So he said, they, Shankaracharya told them, in Hastamalaka is that Mahatma. In your child is a great saint. You give him to me and he will feel home. And his parents did namaskar to Shankaracharya and said, thank you. And this Hasta Malaka was the third major disciple of Shankara Acharyaji. So beautiful that the verses that Hasta Malaka uttered, Shankara Acharyaji wrote a commentary on it. Guru writing commentary on Shishya. Wow. That is the depth of Hasta Malaka. This was the greatness of Shankara Acharyaji and his disciples. Now, where does he go next? What does he do? That we will see in the next session.